what we've derived so far is that delta v from a to b equals minus integral of e dot ds from a to b. And really, that has nothing to do with a point charge. We've actually used a point charge to illustrate things. But uh, this is just, in general, always true, what the potential is. That's how we define the potential. Now, I've erased my little a to b there. But here, it could be anywhere. It could be a to b, a to b, from any a to any b. It could even be the same point, and you get no potential difference. So now, to really get the potential near a point charge, we have to actually plug in the formula for E and figure out what's going on. Okay? So let's see. Delta V then, or yeah, the change in potential from A to B will be equal to minus the integral from A to B E. Well, E for a point charge or for a sphere of charge is KE times the charge over the radius squared times what? What makes it a vector? R hat. And it's that r hat that is dotted with ds. So our general expression seemed to make sense. The e field along ds, everything was fine. And now when you really apply it to a specific case, it, that starts to look weird. What exactly uh, does that mean? So let's look at it. What, what would r hat dot ds mean? r hat would always be in this direction. And ds just depends on where you are, where you're walking around. Right? You could be going that way. You could be going that way all these different directions. R hat is radially always out and has a unit magnitude. DS moves around, depends on where you're going. So R hat dot DS, basically in words, it's the component of DS in the radial direction. It's saying, whatever path you're taking, for each step, how far are you moving radially? Because that's actually all that matters. In terms of potential, all that really matters is when you move along a field line, when you move out and go to a different electric field. If you move sideways, the potential is not going to change. So this is just picking off of all these little steps, how much is the radius changing? How much is your radius from the charge changing? Because that's all that matters. So what this tells us is that delta V a to B does not depend on path. Oops. Um, it only depends on changes in the radius. It only on changes and that's due to the symmetry of the system. It's a point charge, E field lines go out. The E field only changes when you change radius. The E field doesn't change uh, when you move around. So we could then write delta V A to B as minus the integral from A to B of K E Q over R squared. <coughs> and we can basically take this dot product out because what is it? It's changes in the radial direction. It's magnitude. This is 1. This is your step size ds. You can just put it together and call it dr. Okay. All that matters in a motion is, say, if this is my ds right here, all that matters is we draw a radius here and we draw a radius here. All that matters is how much, if this is ds, did dr change? How much did r change? r changed dr. r changed an amount dr. So. To write it and make it completely a scalar equation, it is a scalar because this is a dot product, but to take all the vector stuff out for a point charge, you can just call it dr. So there, finally, we've done what we said we were going to do, <laughs> the potential near a point charge. Minus integral from A to B of K, Coulomb's constant, Q over R squared, dr. <coughs>